Hi, my name is Addison. So today what I'm going to be teaching you is polar coordinates. So polar coordinates is basically the exact same thing as the unit circle, but instead of being two-dimensional, it's three-dimensional and is also more applicable to the world we live in. And one example of this would be a globe. So in addition to not only learning about polar coordinates, we also need to make sure that we have some objectives in mind for when we're going throughout the rest of the lesson. So Students are going to learn how to do a bunch of different things, but so mainly what we're going to learn is we're going to learn about terminology I think that's spelled wrong, but terminology for what the different aspects and parts are that we need to know, the vocab that we need to know for being able to understand the different parts of polar coordinates. Okay, so this is going to include vocab. And another thing that we're going to learn is we're going to learn what the heck is going on with this over here. So we're going to understand the different applied concepts that polar coordinates actually ties into with real life. So we're going to delve into the real life, real life aspects of polar coordinates. Yay! Okay, so also another thing that we're going to learn is how to actually graph and understand what the heck is going on with polar coordinates. What is a polar coordinate? Why do we need to know this? So we're going to learn how to graph and I'm just going to blanket statement say how to understand what a polar coordinate is. So and understand polar coordinates. So with these objectives in mind throughout the rest of the lesson, it can help you to really pinpoint in on the different things that are going to be key to understanding the rest of the lesson. In addition to not only our objectives, another thing that's going to be really key is this could also be on tests in the future. So maybe if you take AP Calc next year or I haven't taken stats yet, but maybe even in stats or it'd just be a good concept just to know for just everyday life sort of thing. But for AP tests in particular, this same unit circle could show up on a test. So it's not necessarily just polar coordinates that's so crucial to know. It's just the unit circle in general. So as long as we have that base information of the unit circle, really everything else is going to be really easy to apply to and could also help you on multiple choice for AP test or AP test FRQ questions. So for other topics, there's more than one way to dissect the equation and to really break down the problem that you're doing. But sadly, or maybe fortunately for polar coordinates, there's actually really only one way to do it, which most of the time when you hear that, you, people kind of freak out. But honestly, with the equation and everything that we're going to be going through with this lesson, there's actually really no need to have more than one way to dissect and take apart the equation because the equation is really as simple as r equals a and that's your whole equation so there's not really much else you can do with that. To start out we're gonna start with some great terminology. So first I'm gonna draw my line here. This is a real good line. Um okay so let's label this point three comma sixty degrees and let me fix this. And we'll label this one 
four comma, we'll say 210. Yeah, that, that looks right, 210. Uh, so this right here is going to be called the pole, P-O-L-E, just like the North Pole. And that's how I personally remember it because it's like the center point that everything else branches off of. And if you can see from here, this would be, like this image here would be more like if you were looking from the top of a globe down. And so what we have is this here, what this first number represents is, so the first number is going to represent the radial coordinate. Radial coordinate. And so in this case, the radial coordinate is going to be 3, because see, that's the first number. Okay, so this, what does the second number mean? Well, the second number, okay, so second number, your second number is actually going to be your angular coordinate. So, let's see, angular, that's not, here, let me face that. <laughs> angular uh, coordinate, and so, if we were to think about this in terms of this, this first number means that it's one, two, three dashes out from the pole, and it's 60 degrees from right here. So this here is going to be 60 degrees. So if we look at this side with our fake unit circle thing going on here, so it would be three, so one, two, three at line 60 degrees. So another fun example of this is when we actually did something in class similar to this. So one thing that we did was we played Battleship, but instead of playing Battleship with like the normal pegboard, we used actually a sheet of paper like this. And it was really fun as a good like test and reminder like, hey, we're always going to be using the unit circle like as, as boring as that may be, we're always going to be using it. But it was really fun because I have degrees here because I personally prefer degrees, which isn't a good habit to get into because I know you need radians and stuff also, but it was really fun because, you know, you'd have to say the first coordinate, so we'd have to say, oh, okay, well, I want to do 3 comma 60, and that's how you would call out your point that you wanted to try to hit their ship with instead of just saying, instead of saying like F2, so it was kind of a fun twist on that. So now that we're done with the terminology, we are going to go on to the most important part, which is graphing, which is really the main concept that we all need to know. But it's actually not as hard as other graphings that we've done in the past, it's actually very simple. And I don't even like graphing that much, but it actually was pleasant for me. So first we're just going to go over some more information. So the most important equation to know for graphing these polar coordinates is that r is equal to a. So our radius is equal to the line or this right here, this line, one of those lines. And so, or you can also call it, if you really want to be mathematical, we can call it theta is equal to a, if we just want to use a random variable instead. So, the actual circle, so, so the circle of the radius, actually, yeah, of the, of the radius is actually the absolute value of a at O or also known as the pole. So you don't have to call it O, that's just for the example I'm going to be using, I'm going to be calling the pole O, but it's always the absolute value of a at the pole. So also it makes a line from through O. So if I pull up or attempt to draw a circle, wow, that's actually not terrible. Uh, and then we have our pole here. So that's going to be 
O. I don't know why I keep wanting to call it zero, but O. And then, so, we draw this here. So, let's say that our problem example says R is equal to 1 and R is equal to negative 1 and we're told to graph that. Okay, well how are we going to graph that? Well, actually, it's a lot more simple than you think. You would just go out from your pole, so let's say there's... It's like the inner circle here, so if we... Yeah, if that's the inner circle. Then this would be 1 here, and R would be equal to 1 because the absolute value of A has would be 1. So even if it's negative, it's still going to be the absolute value, therefore making it positive. So also, um, this is just, we just call this X really, there's not really a real defined name for that, uh, I guess other than really like the, other than the polar axis I guess, but X is a lot more simpler. So. This is a much larger scale version of this. So if we were trying to do this and show it on here, it would be more like, there's no specific degree here, but it would just be at one. So it would be at, let's say here. Because it would be on the first ring out. That's how I like to think about it instead of thinking about it like in terms of lines out, I think about it, oh, the first ring, the second ring, the third ring, and then from there you just count out on your actual degree or radian line from your unit circle. So if we did, let's say, have an example where it wasn't just talking about the radius, but we had a similar scenario to earlier where it was like three, co ooh, <laughs> three comma 60 degrees, then we could say, let's just for poops and giggles say that this is 30 degrees. So this right here, this angle measurement here, that's right there, polar coordinate or the polar angle, but it's also known as the azimuth, which I mean, if we really want to get fancy with that, but I'm pretty sure that we're all pretty comfortable with just the angle. That's how I like to see it. It's a lot more simpler, but. Honestly, this is really all there is to it, and it's really not as hard as it sounds. I know when you hear the word polar coordinate, you automatically like start to freak out because you're like, ah, polar, I don't know what, but it's actually really simple as long as you can remember your unit circle. It, the unit circle is your saving grace, and as much as Arthur hammers it into your head, it's actually very important to know. So. That's all I'd recommend and hope you learned something. Is a globe or just the world we live in in general, but one... Graphing! Yay! That's definitely not my favorite part is graph... Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Help.